Good morning. I uh, got my cup of, of joe here. It's a beautiful Friday morning in Colorado Springs. And I heard this amazing message today from Father Mike Smith on the Catechism in the Year. So I just wanted to share it and expound upon it a little bit because I never really thought about it before in this way. So the story of the prodigal son. Uh, Luke 15, in your Bible. If you're not familiar with it, uh, there's a father, two sons. The youngest son asks for his inheritance. He goes off, he squanders it on lascivious activities. And so he ends up basically broke and hungry. He goes home to his father and seeks forgiveness, reconciliation, really just wants some food, honestly. That's all he's expecting is to be treated as a worker or a slave for the father. And the father runs out and welcomes him, puts on his his rings on the son, a nice cloak, has a feast with a, a fatted calf, you know, with all the townspeople or people around him, um, and just celebrates the return of his son. And the oldest son comes in probably from working at the fields and you could say that the story is as much as um, about the older son as it is about the younger son the older son comes in and he's he sees all this commotion he says what's happening no well your younger brother returned and we're celebrating and the older son goes to his father and he's he says father all these years i slaved for you and you never even gave me a kid goat to celebrate with my friends, to have dinner with my friends. He never gave me a reward, you know, and here's my son, uh, my brother rather, who went off and squandered his inheritance and you're rewarding him with a big feast. And the father, you know, echoes these famous words, you know, he was lost and now he's found. So that's why we're celebrating it. But also the, older brother if we key in on on him and think about how that applies to our own life how often are we that person who's asking where's my reward you know I've been serving you I've been doing good things why am I suffering now and I like how father Mike takes us and analyzes it in terms of the virtue of charity in love, love for our, our fellow men, love for God. And he keys in on a word there that I had not thought about before, but he, he keyed in on how the older brother says, I have slaved for you. Where's my reward? So he's keying in on these three kinds of love that we can have towards God and our neighbor. One is a, um, a slave mentality where I'm going to love you out of fear that if I do something wrong, you're going to punish me. And then there's this love called a mercenary love where we're seeking a reward or some kind of money. It could be uh, heaven, you know, and, and sometimes it's both. It's, it's fear of hell and it's seeking the reward of heaven. And there's nothing wrong with that if it keeps us from sin. But the real love that God is calling us to express is this love of a son or daughter of God. And so this really hit home for me because I have a young son and my love for him is unconditional. And if you have kids or even a pet, you probably understand this kind of love where you don't expect them to be perfect all the time you just want them to be your son or daughter or or pet you just want them to be who they are and and love you as a son and be a partner with you in this journey of life so you, you don't want your son or daughter to be doing stuff just out of fear or or even a dog right that's that's not, that's not fun if the dog or your child or whatever 
cowers from you every time you approach and, and they're bowing to you and that's you know that's not what you want and at the same time you don't want them to only be coming to you for a treat or for some money you know so they can go shopping or something or the car keys you don't want them to be doing nice things just out of that desire but you want them to just have that honest love where they just like being with you just like being around you just like participating in this journey of life with you and that I think changes the picture so the father of the prodigal son he was celebrating because his son had returned you know he didn't he didn't really care about is you know the future is he gonna be my slave is he gonna um, want rewards further further money he was just in the moment he's like my son is back and in the same way God rejoices when we return and he he doesn't ask us to be slaves the father never asked the older brother to be a slave you know is what I'm imagining he he, he just wants him to be in this love state of love with him and Father Mike gave this great example, which I guess I'll, I'll repeat here as well, is um, it's not like, imagine a father and a son. It's not like uh, the father is, you know, leaving a, a note on the table in the morning saying, here's all your chores. Make sure you get these done. I'll be back to check on you. And if you do them, I'll give you a reward. Or if you don't do them, I'll punish you. It's not, it's not like that. It's more like, um, the father comes, sits down at breakfast with his son, and the son's like, hey, dad, what are we doing today? And the dad's like, well, um, I got some projects, and I could use your help, and if you could do these things for me, and then I'll, I'll go do these things, and then we'll go out and check this out together and, and do a little project together. You know, it's, it's kind of like that thing. You're both working towards the same goals, but you're working collaboratively and in different ways. You have different roles but you're cooperating with each other out of love out of charity and that's that's the kind of love that god wants from us and when we realize that i think it gives us permission to be imperfect and it gives us a new motivation for doing the right and avoiding sin so i'm no longer doing things just because I want heaven or just because I'm afraid of hell. Those are good motivators you know, to start with, but the ultimate good, the perfect version of love for God would be, I'm gonna avoid these things out of love for God because I want him to be the main focus of my life. He is my father and I am his son or, or daughter. And that's, that's my ultimate motivation for avoiding these things because I want him to be my my focus I always want to have my eyes on him in my life I don't want to be distracted by these other things I don't want to have any other gods in my life I don't want to be worshiping other things not because I'm afraid or I want a reward but because I know that God is the ultimate good and he loves me and I love him that relationship is is the key so I I know I may be babbling a little bit, but I hope that helps. And I just say today, the thing I have in my mind is to always keep my eyes on God. Like when Jesus appeared to the apostles on the Sea of Galilee and he was walking on the water and Peter fell in the water and Jesus said, all you need to do to walk on the water is just keep your eyes on me. Ignore the storm, ignore the waves, ignore the feeling of the water on your feet. Just keep your focus on me. Just lock eyes with me and always have that in your head. I know it's not <laughs> um, possible to keep your eyes locked with Jesus in real life. Obviously, it's a figure of speech, but in your mind. Keep Jesus always in your mind. And, and ask God, kind of like the son sitting down at the table with his father. God, what do you have planned for me today? What do you want me to do today? What do you have planned for me in my, in my life? What are you going to do in my life? Reveal those things to me. Ask God 
why, why God is this happening? And, and what do you want me to do? And sometimes you'll hear God answer, not all the time maybe, but if you listen, if you take time to listen, if you go to God in prayer, you'll hear in your heart, in your head, little inklings of what he wants you to do. And when you hear those things, pay attention and, and do them. Try to do them, try to really listen. And, and that is gonna lead you on that path that God has set out for you. And you'll be participating in God's plan through charity, through love, and that will spill out and flow out to all the people around you. I hope that's helpful. I'll be praying for you. Please pray for me too. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen.